gave a long speech. Then he took questions on all range of issues without a teleprompter, without notes, in a way that says he has a grasp of what he's talking about. I know she says she wants to debate him again, but I think that might be a really bad idea. She was up 20 points on who has the mental fitness and competency to be able to do this job. And him rambling about everything that darts into his mind does not mean that he is capable of doing this job. One day after Vice President Kamala Harris gave a substantive and policy-focused interview on MSNBC, and mere minutes after Donald Trump gave a meandering and incoherent press conference, liberal Fox News commentator Jessica Tarlov hit both Trump and her four MAGA co-hosts where it hurts with a series of pretty brutal reality and fact checks about the 2024 election, the relative competence of Harris versus Trump, and who's actually better on policy, even as her MAGA co-host tried to pretend that it's actually Trump who's the real policy wonk. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, got one clip to show you. It's relatively long. It's from the most recent episode of The Five, and it follows, I should say The Five was delayed because Donald Trump gave an incoherent and meandering press conference that Fox covered, and it pushed The Five back. Then The Five reacted to it, as well as last night's interview on MSNBC with Vice President Harris, which I mentioned in a previous video. That interview was very substantive. It was actually surprisingly tough, even though it was on MSNBC, which is a relatively Democratic-friendly network. Stephanie Rule, the host, asked Kamala Harris tough economic policy questions and asked for specifics. And for the most part, the vice president gave them, speaking extemporaneously without a teleprompter. It was an interview. And in contrast, Donald Trump had a meandering, incoherent press conference earlier today where he gave prepared remarks, then went off script and didn't give substantive answers per usual. But that didn't stop Jessica Tarlov's MAGA co-host from pretending that actually Kamala Harris bombed in that MSNBC interview. And it's actually Donald Trump who's the real substantive policy wonk, somebody who has a real grasp of the details. I want you to listen to this cope coming from not Jesse Waters, not Greg Gutfeld, not uh, Janine Pirro, but Dana Perino, who's probably the, the sanest of Jessica Tarlov's four MAGA co-hosts. Listen to the sheer cope coming from her. Go to President Trump. He started at five. 44, gave a long speech, then he took questions on all range of issues without a teleprompter, without notes, in a way that says he has a grasp of what he's talking about. You might not like how he answers it, but he can answer the question. He has a set of principles from which he makes decisions. And I just, I, I think at this point, the Democrats should just be hoping that she continues to hide in plain sight. I know she says she wants to debate him again, but I think that might be a really bad idea at some point for her if, you, if you're her team. And I want to have a debate here. I'm not saying that I don't. I'm just saying tactically, I don't know if it's a good idea. Before we get to Jessica Tarlov's response, that's how you know Dana Perino at the end of the day is a moron and an unprincipled loser because she could never defend that position in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jessica Tarlov. She has to be uh, the beneficiary of three backup supporters in the form of Gutfeld, Waters, and Pirro. I would love for Jessica Tarlov and Dana Perino to just litigate that particular issue. So when Donald Trump is asked how he would cut childcare costs and he goes viral with a wildly incoherent answer, Dana, what happened there? Are you going to pretend that that was actually a substantive and really focused, detail-oriented answer? Or are you perhaps lying because you're a Republican and Donald Trump is the Republican candidate? Donald Trump was never, is not, and shall never be a policy-focused person. He has gone viral with his mimetically stupid answers to questions. And hey, listen, I'm not sitting here and saying that Vice President Harris has is the greatest policy wonk in the Democratic Party. She is not. And if you want to criticize her for giving circu circuitous answered uh, and circular answers and screwing up answers from time to time, so be it. You're free to do so. But what I can't fathom is you imposing such a standard on her, but looking your viewers in the eye and pretending that Donald Trump is some sort of policy genius. The facts don't bear that out. And also, again, before we get to Jessica Tarlov, really interesting that Dana Perino thinks it would be a bad idea for Vice President Harris to debate Trump. Well, they've only debated once, and she kicked your boy's ass, and the polls reflect it. So again, maximum cope from Dana Perino. We have one data point here, and she won, and your guy lost, and he lost badly. So it's pure cope coming from you. You have no evidence to support the idea that Trump would beat her in a debate. 
And given that Donald Trump is avoiding another debate with her, even though she has repeatedly publicly challenged him, and even when your co-host, Brett Bayer of Fox News, says actually it's Trump who's the holdup on a Fox News hosted debate, I'm sorry, lady, but the facts are not on your side. They sit squarely with Kamala Harris. So now let's get to uh, Jessica Tarlov's response. Me every step of the way. And yet she's trying to separate herself, saying that she's the changed candidate. Uh, Joe Biden isn't doing her any favors. No, she's not just saying that she's the change candidate. The American public thinks that. So in the latest set of polling, she's nine, 10 points up on who represents change. And we know from the debate that her most effective line was, I am not Joe Biden. So obviously they didn't conference about what he was going to say there. I do think it gives her foreign policy bona fides that she needs to step into this role. But, you know, if you want to say she said holistically three times within 40 seconds, Sure, that did happen. But if people were watching the interview, they also heard that she's going to give tax cuts to 100 million people, that you're going to get a $6,000 child tax credit, that she's going to build 3 million new housing units, that she's not going to, quote, apologize for going after corporations, that you can actually raise the corporate tax rate. And we heard from Donald Trump on a range of issues, which did include the border, but also that Nancy Pelosi should be prosecuted for January 6th, Hunter Biden's laptop always makes an appearance. Ukraine is gone. And then my favorite, praising Operation Wetback. So I don't see how someone who isn't already politically dug in and knows who they're going to vote is going to watch someone who maybe repeats a word or two and someone who was talking about Operation Wetback and not know who they want to choose for this election or who they think would be more competent and ready for the job. And I should note on that, she was up 20 points on who has the mental fitness and competency to be able to do this job. And him rambling about everything that darts into his mind does not mean that he is capable of doing this job. It means that he can stand there and hog attention for 55 minutes or whatever. She's 100 percent correct. And that's why I'm glad that she hit um, the other four MAGA co-hosts on Trump's vulnerabilities. So as whether they want to admit it or not or accept it or not, uh, the vice president is seen as the change candidate. She is not, um, you know, granted incumbent status, nor is she burdened by incumbent status, given whether we like it or not. The Biden administration is very unpopular. So she has dodged that particular and proverbial bullet. Now, they might not like that, but that is the perception. I don't like a lot of the perceptions about Donald Trump, given that he seen as, again, apparently by so many people as a guy who can give substantive policy answers when, in fact, he can't, given that he's perceived as being good for the economy and immigration when there's no evidence to support it and plenty of evidence to the contrary. Um, But this is the political reality, and them trying to change it has done nothing. I also like how she has finally hit them on the polling about competence and mental fitness. This is something that I have been harping on again and again and again and again. When President Biden was the Democratic nominee, Janine Pirro, Greg Gutfeld, Jesse Waters, and Dana Perino would harp endlessly about President Biden's perceived senility. But it's actually Donald Trump now who is the vulnerable candidate in this respect. He is seen in poll after poll after poll after poll after poll by a majority of Americans as being mentally and physically unfit to be president. They have no answer for that. They don't want to address it. They they stayed silent. Know how they didn't even fight back at all. This this group of MAGA cultists that Jessica Tarlov works with are usually so boisterous, they can't wait to heckle and interrupt, but they are so outmatched on the facts that they just sat there in silence because they have no rejoinder. They have no refutation. They know, number one, that Donald Trump is mentally unfit to be president. Number two, even if they didn't, even if they seriously believed to themselves he was mentally fit to be president, they know what the polls say. They're not that stupid. They are aware that poll after poll after poll after poll shows that Most Americans think that Donald Trump is dumber, less mentally and physically fit than Vice President Harris. And so then she goes into specifics, all the meandering non sequiturs and uh, and and just sentence fragments and uh, verbal diarrhea that Donald Trump routinely employs at press conference and one press conference after another. So when they say that he's the policy wonk, they can they can claim that all they want. But people actually comparing Trump to Harris in these interviews, be it at the New York Economic Club for Trump or his recent sit down with a conservative host that we talked about um, in Florida, 
He can't give substantive answers to substantive questions. She can. Is she perfect at it? No. Has she said cringe or embarrassing things before? Yes, but so has President Biden. I mean, so has basically every political candidate not named Barack Obama or Bill Clinton because they're masterful rhetoricians. I mean, it's, it's just so funny, the standard that they are desperately trying to impose on Harris and lowering the bar as, as low as they possibly can for Donald Trump. But the polls don't reflect that people are buying it. Again, he is seen as dumber and less mentally fit and less competent than Kamala Harris. And so I'm glad that Jessica Tarlov brought this up. Uh, and again, they can hang their hats on the fact that she said holistic or holistically three times in 40 seconds. But if we really want to audit or take inventory of which candidate repeats themselves more, many more instances of Trump engaging and employing you know, rhetorical crutches, verbal crutches, because his vocabulary is so small. So even on that stupid comparison, I'm not sure they want to go down that road. Anyway, great performance by Jessica Tarlov per usual. Absolute ridiculous cope from Dana Perino and further proof that though she is not as bad as Jesse Waters, Greg Gutfeld, and Janine Pirro, she is indeed an unprincipled partisan hack who grades Trump on a curve and would never be able to defend it in a one-on-one -on -one scenario against Tarlov or any other prepared liberal or progressive. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.